Well, did you have a chance to think through some of those styles of anger uh, that I see in our society? Maybe which one applied to the people around you? And just to refresh your memory, there was the trash compactor that just pushes everything down and kind of uh, never unleashes their anger, but their anger really starts to smell and it, it kind of leaks and uh, makes them pretty miserable in life. And then there's the volcano who was uh, the one who has a tendency to just explode and spew and send lava flying off in all kinds of different directions. And, and when they start doing that, people run for the hills because who wants to be around that? And they're just not going to be near anyone uh, like that. And some of those folks have trouble getting people to regather around them for fear of it happening again. Then there's a prosecuting attorney who uh, just won't let it go and has to be right all the time. Uh, not only has to be uh, primarily right with whoever it is that they're talking to at the time and who it is that they're building their case against, but they want to make sure that everyone who's listening and everyone who might see it and see it unfold knows that they're right too. And they have arguments and evidence and cold cases that they have made uh, it, it, all in an effort to prove just how right they are in their righteousness. And then there's the stealth bomber who seems like and may even believe that they're not doing anything wrong, that they're not doing anything that's all that destructive because they're just being passive aggressive and passive aggressive people feel like that's not really a, a bad thing to be. And they're just kind of sending in little jabs and little sarcastic comments and little observations uh, about what they see and how they see the world and how they see what somebody else is doing, that they're just kind of sending across the bow to let people know, hey, I see you and I see what's going on and I'm not super pleased with it. And I just want you to know that. Now, it's funny uh, as some of those explanations um, kind of describe different people that you know, and I heard on Sunday folks who came up and told me this is who my spouse is, and this is who my kids are, and maybe this is who I am, and it's great to think about how those descriptions apply to certain people, and, and we may have dealt with someone who seems so consistently and constantly miserable and displeased that they must have been all of these things at some point in their life, and, and most of the time they just seem un unhappy. But let me bring this all far more important in terms of observation. Which one of these are you? Okay, you may not be angry all the time and you may not even be constantly miserable and displeased with life, but you get angry and you get mad. Even if you don't think that you do, you do. Okay, so don't be fooled into thinking that none of this applies to you and that you're not any of these descriptions. And please be aware that even if you feel like it doesn't happen all that often to you, it probably happens more often than you think, or you kind of alternate between all four of the different styles um, just to keep it fresh with yourself and maybe even keep it a little bit hidden from yourself. And these reactions to anger are not healthy and they don't lead to healthy relationships. They don't lead to healthy communities. They don't lead to healthy lives. They certainly aren't healthy reflections of Christ. And conflict and confrontation is going to happen in your life and, and in your relationships, and you're going to get angry. We all do. It, it may even happen today. It may happen this week sometime. And if it does, before you react and before you respond, before you have your remark that you feel like you got to throw out there, let, let God remind you of something. It, it's this one verse. We didn't actually get this one out there on Sunday. Uh, maybe you want to even memorize this. It's only 13 words long. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1 says this. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Okay, a gentle uh, word. Okay, gentleness, a gentle answer this is part of the fruit of the Spirit. It turns away anger, but if you rely on you and you rely on what you bring to the party, it is more than likely going to be something that just stirs things up. So a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Would you just be aware of that? And, and before you hit send on that text, before you make that comment on social media, before you say that kind of snarky thing that you're thinking about saying at the, the, the table with friends, before you um, unleash some of the words that are building up as you can feel your face getting red as you're really angry about something, um, just consider how that reaction is going to play out in the real end of things. It is not worth ruining a relationship. It's not worth ruining a friendship or a marriage or a family setting uh, just so you can be right. It's just not. And so um, think about those things and dwell on those things. And if it, if it helps, memorize those 13 words from Proverbs to just say, look, the, the, the gentleness that we bring to the table is so much more powerful than the angry words that we want to bring. 
And uh, may that kind of perhaps change the way that you react to something today, this week, this year. Um, and, and as we move forward in this series, um, would you just encourage people, maybe encourage you to, to check out that uh, page that we have, that, that tools and resource page that's available on our website or on the app. You just go to the where it says um, what's on your mind and click the, the more information, the more resources uh, button that's there. And you can see all of those tools, books and uh, counselors and um, uh, previous uh, sermon series to watch, just all kinds of help that we want to present to you and into your life to kind of get us away from the unhealthy forms of anger and more in line with uh, God's fruit of the Spirit, the Spirit's way to live life. Uh, let, let, let me pray for that for all of us right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for your care and your concern in our life and for what's going on in us right now. Uh, would you just be with us? Would you help us as we move forward to be more and more like you, to lean more into the fruit of the Spirit, and lean more into having uh, your Spirit guide and direct our hearts and our lives and our words and our reactions, rather than relying on ourselves. Because when we rely on ourselves, it, it never tends to lean uh, anywhere good when it's just us making the decision on how we want to react and what we want to say and how we want to win God, would you just allow us to uh, lean into you in the, um, the moments of confrontation and contention that come up in our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as we continue on in this series, we, we've gone from I'm sad to I'm mad. And then this Sunday, we're, we're going to take on another answer to the question, what's on your mind when it comes to I'm scared? And I think that there's some of us who look around at the stuff going on in our world and we have that response. I'm scared. And we're going to talk about that and talk about where God is there to guide and direct us in the midst of it. And I hope you'll be with us 930 and 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock online. We will hope to see you there. Have a great rest of the week.